Hello friends, I welcome all of you to this course of product and brand management. It is going to be a good journey and I wish for this journey to be a wonderful experience for you with regards to understanding product, the perspective around a product and the journey of a product to become a brand. We will also look into the details of branding and because it is all about the management of a product and a brand, we would learn how strategically, intelligently, meticulously, creatively it is done. We will try to understand the elements around a product and then the concepts around a product, the association of product with other elements of marketing and how everything gels with each other. And subsequently, we will try to build up the, the story towards wherein we would get to learn how all these products around us, they become a brand, how we keep up the product as a brand, what is branding and how do we manage brands, what is the relevance of a product being a brand, why we strive for that and how we take it forward. All these questions which would spontaneously evolve in due course of time, we will try to address and try to learn this art because the ultimate objective of this course is not only for you to understand the subject, but to become someone who can drive product and brand management, who can become a product and a brand manager, who will understand how one should manage the journey of a product, the journey of a brand and the journey of a product to become a brand. So, let us begin, let us see what comes our way and I will start from a bigger picture, a philosophical perspective and then I will take you to finer details of product and brands. The father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi once said, a man is but the product of his thoughts, what he thinks he becomes. It is it's a it is a wonderful thought actually, you know how thoughts, one's own thoughts develop oneself, structure oneself and it you know while, while I was reading this quote, somehow it clicked to my mind that a product probably is the reflection of a person's thought basically. See a man is but the product of his thoughts, a product probably is the reflection of a man's thought or a human's thought. That human can be seen as the creator of that product, the originator of that product. Thomas Alva Edison invented light bulb, you know that light bulb is a product which reflects the thoughts of the inventor. If you will look into these kind of stories and narratives, you would realize that definitely there is a deeper connect with the perspective of the originator and the product and we will see this into you know a specific details when we will talk about 
all the elements. On the other side, when I say that a product has a reflection of you know its originator, the product can be seen with the perspective of reflection of its customers as well. How customer wants to look at the product or how a customer actually starts looking at the product. Now, that reflexivity, that reflection, you know, that is the thing which one has to understand first by observing, then by collating all the aspects which we would be discussing in a sequential manner in this course and then putting all the things together. So, that is you know largely what this course is all about. Then it, it takes me towards another very beautiful quote by Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, you know a great personality himself in whose name on his birth anniversary we celebrate the teacher's day and it is a very sacred day for people like us who belong to the field of academics otherwise also it is a very important day for almost everyone. Now, you see Dr. Radhakrishnan once said the end product of education, now mark these words, his, his perspective was on defining a human being and the role of education in defining that human being. But I am just you know referring to it with the perspective of taking a direction and a clue for our subsequent discussion. So, he said that the end product of education should be a free creative man who can battle against historical circumstances and adversities of nature. Now, it is very interesting you see in today's world wherein, wherein education plays a very prominent role not only for defining a human being, developing the intellect of a human being, the personality of a human being, the persona of a, of a human being and please keep on marking these words you know intellect, persona, personality because we are going to uh, refer to these in subsequent discussions. So, not only education does that, but education actually directs all of us towards our professional capabilities as well. It plays a very specific role there and in today's professional world when you look at technology institutions, management institutions, other professional courses and institutions can we think of these institutions as a system where you know processes are there and a raw student seeking information, knowledge, capability comes and then whole of the system supports that student to become a professionally capable individual. Can we say that we have shaped up a student in the form of a product not to be taken as a literal thing basically and there is a disclaimer that I am not denouncing anything and I am not denigrating human beings. But you see that is I am just collating the processing associated with educational institutions to develop professional capabilities of students which can be utilized for further economic development or other forms of contributions, wherein these students they become human resource for several organizations or economies at large. So, can we say that we can look at them as products? If somehow we can, then this quote of Dr. Radhakrishnan can you know give us an inspiration to see that way. And once we start looking at humans with the perspective of being a resource, a product, a resource which can contribute in the tangibility 
in terms of revenue generation or output or whichever way we want to look at it, creativity, production, manufacturing, services, you see everywhere human resource is functional. And if we try to percolate that thing into functionalities, spe specific skills where human resource is being utilized nowadays or conventionally since ever, then it is a wonderful thing because that human who is structured, developed for his contribution has attributes, has ideas, ideology, perspective, persona, personality, everything. And this is what precisely you know we are going to learn in due course of time. If we can collate that with living human beings that you know these, these elements are we, if we can witness these uh, elements as alive in human beings, then it would be simpler for us to associate such elements in products, any form of product for that matter. And that is precisely my objective is wherein in due course of this journey you try and associate all the elements which we would be discussing with reference to as if we are thinking of a living being, an entity which actually responds to us, talks to us. I will be coming back to this point, just keep this thought in mind start nurturing it around, all of you are students, look at yourself as a resource which would be contributing somewhere and so on. So, let us take the things further, look at this, look at this beautiful character, this character which has become a part of so many lives, so many girls, they have been talking to this character for n number of years now, so for a very long time, if I am not wrong, almost 60, 65 years probably, now we will see. But then you see how well she has become an intense part of the lives of so many girls and, and that is precisely what I was referring to. If Barbie would have been a living girl, you know, kind of. So, she would have exemplified several kinds of personas and personalities which could have been associated with so many girls. You know, just, just imagine that and that is what precisely Barbie was meant to do and she did for, for a very long time. And, and we will talk about Barbie, but just, just focus upon you know what are the aspects associated with Barbie all around in this picture, wherein one is innovation. Yes, definitely there has been product related innovation, how you know, uh, how innovatively we can put a personality and a persona to Barbie, what kind of uh, you know uh, roles we may think about this doll because, because she is one and here we have to multiply uh, you know uh, the elements of how uh, you know Barbie can dwell into different kinds of roles which gel with the thought process of little girls. For example, little, little girl wants to become uh, a pilot actually and, and there is a pilot Barbie girl. Now, now she, she you know somehow responds to uh, the what, what Barbie personifies and, and that, that Barbie carries the reflection of the, the, that girl child's thought process. That is where you know innovation in terms of uh, putting up that you know personality around Barbie and then lots of marketing innovation which we will talk about wherein how that point is well communicated in an innovative way to those small little young girls who uh, you know who actually look forward to their companion that is Barbie. Then comes in you know it, it, it became a global symbol of beauty, elegance, style. You know, all all these little cute girls there, they have been thinking in terms of Barbie as you know someone who, who uh, could be looked upon 
basically. I am not talking of universal uh, kind of an acceptance uh, of this point of view, but this is how Barbie has come all through in due course of time. Then you know comes in you know an aspect of friend and family. So, Barbie is a part of your life and then emotions. You see when we talk of products carrying the similar kind of an aspect which we discussed about humans as products, there are elements of emotions which get associated with us. We will see that in due course of time. Happiness, how a product gives us that kind of a satisfaction and happiness which we always wanted to derive or we thought about that there should be a product of that sort which gives us that kind of a satisfaction and perspective around us. Comfort, and I'll be talking about these elements, you know, uh, for, you know, in, in in sequence also, in correlation also, and so on. Sense of belongingness. Now that is that is the most important thing. You see, I don't know what kind of a product are you uh, having in your hands when you are watching this video. Uh, are you drinking, uh, you know, uh, some some beverage, a tea or something at this moment? If you are, then look at your cup. Is it is it your favorite one which you are you know having in your hands right now, or or are you just you know uh, playing with a one of your favorite pens, which somehow you know is is associated deeply with you, or or uh, you are continuously you know taking your eyes off the screen at this moment and you are watching uh, messages pouring on your mobile phone. So so you know which is which is actually trying to gain your attention time and again despite of the fact that probably mobile phone knows that you are watching. Uh, an educational course video. I'm 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 not saying literally mobile phone knows, but mobile phone is distracting you continuously at this moment. And mobile phone is doing because somehow mobile phone belongs to you, and you belong to that mobile phone. Right now, it is happening with you, somehow. And then love, affection, persona. I am going to devote lots of time. You know, at least 10-15 minutes on on uh, in the subsequent session. But but you see, it it again is how a personality or, or a person reveals its, uh, himself or herself. So, the revelation of the product in consonance with a person actually that is where persona comes in and we will talk about briefly uh, later on as well as I said. Experience associated with the product. How do you feel when, uh, when you, you know, ride your favorite bike or scooter? How do you feel that uh, when you, when you, uh, you know, uh, go on uh, bicycling and in uh, you know uh, in surrounding areas or you drive your favorite car basically or, or you go somewhere you know to a favorite restaurant with your friends basically that is what precisely experience and that is where you know the products they are associated with generating experience. But what is that experience? That experience is what we desire for from that particular kind of a product. And that is how you know it is it is a continued reflection and reflexivity which keeps on you know playing a particular kind of an intense role all through. And then comes in set of all the items needed to develop a product you know kind of. So, so what, what is product made of? That also makes a lot of difference and we will try to understand because somehow in due course of time you know the material matters. And I'll I'll give share with you examples. You know, for for example, your house. You would have constructed your house with with uh, you know kind of or or uh, someone someone else in your family would have constructed your house if you are staying in a constructed house. And and remember, what kind of intense discussion you would have gone through uh, in terms of the material you would be utilizing. And uh, remember, there are several organizations which position the strength of their products as the part of your life. For example, I, I remember a beautiful uh, advertisement wherein you know uh, it is shown in the storyboard that someone is constructing a school and uh, this, the, the engineer asks his head that what kind of wiring should, should we be doing in this uh, school building. So, um, and then the head engineer responds that if your son or daughter would be going to one school, what kind of a wiring you would have desired for in that building, the safe wiring and that is what they are, you know. So, that is how material also becomes a very intense and important part of uh, the, the product perspective which we will 
carry and we will talk about this. We will try to build up things around all these things which we are discussing at this moment. Ultimately, Barbie is a toy, but the point is, is she actually only a toy or is she a part of a young girl's you know, mind and personality? That is what we have to learn in, in uh, due course of time. And then now let me take you to uh, you know, uh, something uh, more in relation to the discussion which we are carrying forward with. Now let us take few more examples. Let us let us talk of for example, Lego plastic bricks. Simple plain plastic bricks which you use for constructing something for yourself according to your own abilities and potential or a child does that. Even families I have seen doing that together to entertain themselves or to develop the creativity around you know or, or uh, you know to, to spend their time constructively and the kind of shapes and structures they make that actually reflects you know what they want this brick to act as for them. A small simple plastic brick which you know you join in numbers and you give it give give it a shape basically. I remember uh, you may surf it on uh, you know uh, Google or some other source you like wherein a young boy developed a braille printer with Lego toys basically, Lego bricks and then Lego toys at large. So, so you see that is where imagination comes in, that is where your association and intensity of your thoughts along with you know the products and the product persona and personality comes into play and, and you shape up those things around you. And then that is why I chose this example of Lego bricks which is a universally similar kind of a product produced in n numbers and you know several uh, shapes are advised to you but, but then people start developing their own shapes wherein they want those bricks to be seen as a cumulative structure of their imagination. And that is the beauty of this product that you can do so many things out of that and then keep on imagining all the elements we talked about in, in Barbie case also about Lego bricks. Then let us you know see few more examples for example, Ikea Furnitures has several beautiful products, but uh, let us talk about Billy Book case for example, a very renowned product, a very well established product and I will be talking about product life cycle positioning and those kind of elements in due course of time and I will be emphasizing upon the fact that simple bookcase you know which, which comes uh, as a collection of shelves uh, in, in, in a rectangular box you bring it home and according to your desired or required shapes which you require according to the you know availability of space in your room and so on. So, the several kinds of dimensions are available and you fit it in there and in you know it, it becomes the part of your life. It is it's called as a bookcase which is primarily uh, used for keeping books and but it is it's a sequence of you know shelves in different heights and different arrangements you just go to uh, their website and you will find that. And that becomes a part of your life wherein you put so many things on you know those shelves and so on and, and it is it, it remains there for a long time it is always there actually. It becomes so naturally a part of one's life that uh, you know uh, most probably after a stage we stop noticing that, but that is the beautiful part. But if you eliminate that product from that particular space which it has occupied for quite some time, then what happens? Would you feel the vacuum? Yes, you would. Suddenly you would not find you know that place where you would have been keeping your wristwatch and a mobile phone for example after entering into the house. Suddenly you do not find you know where, where to put up my book nicely. And, and that is where you know it, it becomes the part of your life. So, you see a simple thing which can be arranged in different formations becomes a part of your life. How do we notice that? By just eliminating it, eliminating it for a while. And then 
you know you can choose examples like beverages wherein a sip of tea calms you down what is that tea your your favorite one which you like and somehow your mind tells you that this is the time when you should be having that cup of tea actually and and you see it, it talks to you it talks to you remember when you feel like um, i'm unable to think further you go to your kitchen you start preparing your favorite tea and when you start pouring that and in, you know the, the aroma comes in and at that particular moment you feel like talking to your tea and you know how much to pour in what is the combination required and so on that is that is what we are talking about at this moment who conceives that definitely the product manager the the originator he conceives that he thinks of that she thinks of that and then they bring it to you then they put it in front of you with the right perspective it resonates with you and things go on that is what we are referring to let's see a few more examples very quickly and and we can keep talking about you know with this subject with lots of support from lots of examples now a simple water bottle which you carry along all through you just can't live without it after a particular kind of a stage you leave your room your bottle is in your hands you are comfortable that you have some water with you basically your throat is sore your what hot water bottle gives you you know relief of you know having a sip of some some water and and so on and if it is not there you feel uncomfortable you are going on a journey you you don't look here and there you don't search for water whenever you feel thirsty you just have a sip that is how it becomes a part of your life who has conceived that again so many people associated with that a pen one of the most important you know uh, parts of our lives basically you know pen when when you start writing with your pen does it helps in you know propelling your thoughts many a times if you are writing with your favorite pen it does it does it's precious for you and i can keep on going for you know for with with uh, telling so many stories on uh, pens to you uh, wherein if that pen is gifted to you by your grandfather basically and and uh, some elder who loves you and in academics gifting your pen to your you know to to a colleague and a friend is a very respectable thing actually because you are actually you know bowing or i should say praising the efforts of your colleague it's it's a it's a sort of a, you know a cultural element in academics wherein you offer your pen when your your uh, you know friend or colleague has achieved something basically you you say that i feel utmost respect for you and i am giving you one of my most important things basically you know a pen so that is how you know it it varies harry potter book i am referring to have you read it if you haven't do read it and you will feel that jk rowling has taken you through so many things basically sometimes books though being just products but are so important that you keep those books for life with you you refer to those books so many times you read those books so many times and sometimes you feel that you know that book is actually guiding your thoughts that is how it goes Uh, or you are one of your favorite suvs if even if you are not driving that you are living with that somehow you want to possess it you want to buy it that is what you know product is basically and a motorbike it gives you a feeling you know that you are just going on the road as if you are sailing on a boat and that is that is what you know we are, we are talking of when we talk of products with all the perspectives associated with with those so i'll leave you with this this kind of a thought and intensity associated with you know products and and this is a glimpse of what we have in store what we will be talking about in due course of time in the meantime just start looking around you just you know look at your favorite products and try to imagine that how they have become an intense part of your life so i leave you with this thought goodbye till next time when i begin our discussion from here itself thank you
and goodbye.